So for many years of my life, I felt like I was caught in a loop. I would do the same things every day, which is obviously incredibly boring. And I would run into the same problems every day, which is incredibly painful. But when I started to learn about double loop learning and how Kobe Bryant, Ray Dalio, and even Beyonce have used this principle, it really started to help me. It's one of the main things that helped me break out of this cycle. I would get incredibly stressed about not doing the things I knew I should be doing, so I would procrastinate by playing CSGO, a video game, which would cause me more stress because it's definitely not the thing that I wanted to be doing, which was a cycle and I'd get caught in this loop again and again and again. And I had upper and lower limits in my bank account and I would cycle between the two. Basically, I had limits in my mind that when I got over that amount of money in my bank account, I would spend all of my money until it dropped below a certain amount. I would freak out and I would save until it went back up. And it was always stuck between these two different points. And it's the perfect metaphor for how I was living my life and how so many people live their life. Stuck between two points, constantly fluctuating between those two points, but never really breaking free and never really making progress. This results in a life of boredom. It results in a life of mediocrity. And it's definitely not the life that I wanted to be living. And a lot of people say they come to a job and they say they've got 20 years of experience. But do they have 20 years of experience? Or do they have one year of experience repeated 20 times? In a year, are you living 365 days? Or are you living one day repeated 365 times? Seneca said that often a very old man has no other proof of his long life than his age. This kind of an existence is an existence that we all want to be avoiding. And the reason that so many people are caught up in this kind of an existence, and I was caught up there, was because I was engaging in single loop learning when I should have been engaging in double loop learning. Now, whenever you take an action or you make a decision in your day-to-day -day life, straight away, this is single loop learning. You're doing the activity. An example of this is when I upload this YouTube video, I'm engaging in single loop learning. But as soon as you look back on a decision or an activity, that's double loop learning. Double loop learning is about reflecting. It sounds simple, but there's more to it. The example is when I upload a YouTube video, if I come back and assess how well did this YouTube video perform and how did my audience perceive it, that is double loop learning. Although this change seems subtle, the difference in single and double is only one difference between those things. This is genuinely the difference between a positive spiral that leads you up and up and up where your trajectory is better. You feel like you're becoming the person you want to become. You're making progress every single day and you're getting the results to become of that. The monetary, the, the social status, the, the body, whatever the case may be, that's a positive spiral. And a negative spiral, well, over time, things are getting worse and worse and worse and they're getting worse at a quickening rate as time goes on. This reflection, is the difference between the two. It's the difference between making the same mistake again and again and again and making a mistake once, learning from it and never making that mistake ever again. Billionaire Ray Dalio said, It's okay for you to uh, make mistakes. It's not okay for you to not learn from those mistakes. These are the most fundamental principles which are the basis of success. And the reason that this subtle shift can give you such drastic results is because of systems thinking. Systems thinking is a mental model that everybody should have and it's made up of inputs, processes and outputs. Everything in a life is a system and it's made up of these three different parts. Single loop learning, you have the input, the process and the output and that stays constant. Because chances are in your life, the inputs you're receiving, the people you're around, the environment you're in, the job that you're at, that stays pretty similar. And the processes, the brain and the decisions you make, that stays pretty similar. Not many people engage in personal development or learn too much. So because the inputs are constant and the processes are constant, the outputs are constant. They stay the same. This is what makes you feel like you're living a boring life. You're doing the same things regularly. Or you're experiencing the same problems regularly. You get in a toxic relationship, you get out of it, and you get into a similar relationship that's eerily similar to the previous one. It's because of systems thinking and it's because the inputs and the processes are the same. Double loop learning allows the inputs and the processes to change based on outputs. Once the system's been ran through once, you're able to reflect 
back and change the system to give a different result. Which means even if the inputs are the same, the processes are different. Your decision making is more refined. You're able to really assess how to make this decision a little bit better because you've collected data from reflecting. And that change is subtle enough to put you on an upward spiral instead of experiencing the exact same results again and again and again. I mean, Beyonce is the same, same thing. Really? After a performance, she's immediately on her laptop re-watching the performance. No way. Yes, seeing how to do things better. What could we have done differently? Understanding that nothing is ever perfect, but the challenge is try to get them as perfect as they can be. Mm -hmm. and what can you do? It's in your control. But in order to really get the benefits of double loop learning, so that it's ingrained in us and so that it becomes automatic, so that we use it every single day, we've really got to get bought into the concept and we've got to understand it deeply. So the rest of the video is going to do whatever it takes to make double loop learning something that happens automatically inside of your own brain. First of all, Tom Bayes was an English statistician and philosopher who wrote an essay towards solving a problem in the doctrine of chaos. Unfortunately for him, the essay only was found in 1763, which was two years after his death, so we didn't get to see people using his concept. Bayes' theorem is used today by entrepreneurs and even nurses and teachers in order to help them improve their decision making. Bayes' theorem puts emphasis on the importance of old data and new data in decision making and explains to you how you should balance the two. There's a formula on screen right now that statisticians use, but for this video we've just got to focus on the importance of understanding Bayes' theorem in the day to day. Very simply, old data that you've collected over the course of your life is important, but new data that you collect as times change is also very important. And we've got to constantly balance the two in order to help us make decisions. And as you engage in double loop learning, you're gonna be presented with new information, which is why Bayes' theorem is so important to understand. Imagine a poker player. Poker is a game of probabilities. And at any point in a game of poker, there is old data and there's new data. The old data is about the cards that have already been played and how previous players interact with each other, and new data may be when a new card is revealed. The poker player is constantly having to readjust the probability of winning a hand based on new data whilst still remembering the importance of old data in the context that they're in. And Elon Musk has talked about this before where he views the future as a decision tree constant branching probabilities with different likelihoods and different outcomes and he says that new data comes in and affects the outcomes and he's constantly got to be reassessing. But as simple as this concept sounds, we've got to address two pitfalls that people fall into if we want to be able to engage in double loop learning. The first one is the availability heuristic. This states that we accept information that's readily available and new information that's prevented to us, we're far more likely to focus on that. And the second heuristic is what I like to call the old man heuristic, where they only focus on old data and ignore any new argument that's provided to them. Both of these heuristics are incredibly common on a day-to-day -day basis. People either only focusing on new data and forgetting about the context, people only focusing on old data and ignoring new arguments, ideas, or data that's provided to them. For example, when TikTok came out, I focused on the new data that it was the new emerging platform. So I personally, and as well, I'm ashamed to admit this, I uploaded a couple videos on TikTok revealing my own personal stance, kind of like these personal development videos. But I was forgetting old data. I was forgetting all that YouTube had done for me and I was forgetting how valuable that I think YouTube's gonna be. I thought that TikTok was gonna come and go, but I think YouTube's here to stay. I was only focused on new data, I got excited, and a lot of people fall for bright, shiny objects due to the availability heuristic. So when reflecting and when engaging in double loop learning, we've got to accept the new data that we provide to ourselves through reflection but we can't ignore the context and the old data that we've collected over the course of our life. Second, Ray Dalio has a formula about how to make progress and whether or not you're making progress. He states that pain plus reflection equals progress. 
And a lot of people view pain as bad, but that's not always the case. If you give students simple questions, they're not going to succeed. It's too easy. If you give them difficult questions, they push themselves and they fail. That's when true learning comes about. So we've got to reframe the way that we view pain because the most beneficial double loop learning comes from pain. It comes from the difficult things. It comes from the things that we don't want to address. Pain is a radar that's showing us where the most opportunity for growth is. If something's painful, it's clear that there's a problem there and where there's a problem, there's an opportunity for us to improve. Understanding pain gives us a massive potential to improve our character. Got to deal with it. Face it, learn from it. You look at it and say, oh, there's the mismatch. Oh, there's the gap. You know, and all those little things, and it sucks. But, but you don't want to have that feeling again, do you? Right? So you got to really study it, face it. And when most people think about learning, they think about a teacher teaching them. They think about reading a book, reading a textbook. That's the way most people view learning. But I want to make the argument that perhaps pain is the best teacher and perhaps reflecting on pain is even better than all of those things. We know that history repeats itself. So if you have a problem, a painful problem once, you're going to have the same painful problem again and again and again. We're caught in these cycles, facing the same barriers again and again and again. So when we have a problem and we feel pain because of it, that's our body saying, look at this thing. We need to solve this thing, otherwise it's gonna repeat. And a problem that's solved is a problem that's solved for life. And a problem that's not solved is a problem that's gonna come up and hurt you again and again. This really shows the value of reflecting on pain. And the second order consequences is obviously beneficial, we're able to learn. But the first order consequence is that it's difficult. We really don't want to do it. But the problem is that it's difficult to view the future. So we often find it difficult to sacrifice short term, even if we know it's going to be beneficial in the long term. I don't want to talk about failure. I don't want to talk about weaknesses. I'm saying go to the pain, go to the pain. And before you know it, the pain becomes pleasure. We have to start reflecting on pain. That is the hidden gem of personal development. Third, there is a massive pitfall that people fall into when they try and engage in double loop learning, and that is ego. We try and protect our ego by avoiding looking at things that suggest that we're not as good as we think that we are. I used to get feedback from teachers after submitting an assignment. I wouldn't look at the feedback, I'd just put it away. Obviously, this is massively detrimental because I can't improve if I'm not looking at feedback, but my ego didn't want me to do it. And whenever we reflect or whenever anybody provides us with feedback that we can use to improve ourselves with double loop learning, we either enter a fight or flight response. We either flight, we just ignore the evidence, we don't reflect or we ignore the person that's giving us feedback, or we go into fight mode where we get defensive and we argue our points back. But this is where most of the learning takes place. We spend so much of our time solving problems externally in the external world, but we don't spend enough time solving problems internally and reflecting what internal problems cause the external problem to happen. It's funny how everybody says they can handle feedback. Everybody, even yourself, think, oh, I can handle feedback, I know, I improve, I'm a student. When the reality comes down to it, it's so difficult to not get defensive and to not feel like we're being attacked. The solution to this is to reframe our identity from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. Instead of viewing ourselves as right, build your identity around being a student. Being a student or a learner is the best identity you can ever develop because that is the identity that's going to give you the best trajectory. A student is going to beat someone who thinks they're the best because the student is going to learn and over time they will beat the other person. It's just so difficult and we all think that we act in a different way than we actually do, which is what I talk about in my shadow work video. So if you truly want to engage in double loop learning, you want to reap the benefits of reflection and really diving deep into the pain as Ray Dalio and Kobe Bryant and Beyonce have talked about, then click on the video on the screen right now, which is going to walk you through how you can get closer to the person you want to become by removing your shadow side. Click that video. I'll see you there. And thank you so much for making it till the end of the video.